In the world of AI, the news just doesn't slow down. There is so much to go over with you this week, and there are a number of new tools with a ton of new updates. It is not slowing down at all. Now remember to subscribe to the channel if you find any of this useful, and I put out my newsletter once a week that comes right to your inbox with everything you should be learning every single week so you don't have to go down any of the crazy rabbit holes that I do. The link is in the description. And also check out my AI toolbox, which I also keep updating all the time. My goal is to make this stuff accessible to everyone and not just the early adopters. Let's jump right in. So Pink Floyd had a competition that is causing a bit of a debate and a stir. They wanted to celebrate their album, Dark Side of the Moon, and give out 10,000 pounds to the winning music video, Created, okay? They announced on the 5th that the winner was an AI-generated music video. Let's take a look. Now, if you look at this, there is a bit of a debate and there are a lot of people who spend a lot of time animating and they're a little upset that the, the winning video was completely just generated by AI. So you see right here, they announced their winning video, the winning video by Damien Gaum for any color you like in Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. And then if you look at this, saw this gorgeous hand animated submissions, you picked over this generated AI slop. Whoever managed this competition, you know, looking at this, it's like a lot of people are upset about it. And the truth is, is everyone is entitled to their opinion. Uh, the AI stuff is new and nobody uh, has seen some of this stuff before. So they don't think that it is art. And some people think that it is pushing a couple buttons. But I, I know that that person had put in a lot of work to this. So it's really interesting. There's going to be a lot more of these coming up. I know that there have been art competitions. There have been galleries that were generated by AI and people are not happy with it, but some people love it. Some people find it it's a new tool, just like when digital artists started using Photoshop. So uh, as these things keep developing, we'll keep bringing them to you. But in the end of the day, it's kind of, it's neat uh, to watch something like this and see something like this happen. But it's also understandable why people are not as excited about something like that. Now in the world of AI generated music, Everybody has been going crazy. From the people who are petitioning that uh, AI should be used responsibly and not ruin the careers of musicians by uh, training on their data, which is completely reasonable, <laughs> completely. And there are tools like Suno that have popped up creating really neat and really cool songs. And uh, where do they come from? That is the big question. But there is a new tool now called Udio. And Udio has been pretty amazing, and the, the exports of it have been pretty remarkable. Now, Udio is a prompt to music tool that is uh, giving Suno a run for its money. And I say this with all of the understanding and concerns surrounding AI music. But we should show you what is available as it is there, and most likely not going away. And really, I mean, look at this. Uh, Udio is from a former Google DeepMind researcher, and it is really to, um, they're saying that it's working alongside artists. They're saying it's working alongside artists on all specs of product and business development. The company has secured leading investing in seed rounds from A16Z. Uh, they've been drawn to music tools and content creation tools. And if you look at Udio, this is what it is. I'm just going to show you a couple samples. Somebody prompted teen pop show tunes, film soundtrack, television music, uh, singer songwriter. They wanted to create Dune the Broadway musical. Okay, let's take a listen. Baby on 
on board, how I've adored that sign on my car's window pane. The bounce in my step, loaded with pep, cause I'm drunk. So you can discover new songs over here on this tab and literally just find different types of music, whether it's rock, hip hop, pop, jazz, uh, what other people are creating. You can like songs, you can look at others' playlists, you can look at your creations. It's pretty amazing. I'm gonna leave the link to the, to the tool in the bio. They are experiencing a lot of uh, people on the site right now, so it might be backed up and waitlisted, but you should check it out. Okay, Google has been busy this week at their Google Cloud Next conference, introducing a number of new tools and talking about some other ones. You know, I want to go over everything, but let's touch on just a couple of them. Google Vids is going to be made public in Workspace Labs in June. Now, this idea is that you can use assets from all over your Google Drive, slides, docs, and all over the place, and use that to formulate videos to tell a story. Well, there are other apps that do this, integrating it into the app you use the most will definitely take some of that market share away. There is obviously going to integrate Lumiere, which I spoke about in another video. If you take a look right now, this is, this is uh, what they announced, and here is the video. I'm not gonna play the whole thing, I'm gonna leave it in the description, but if you see this, it's all of these other tools that are coming out in all these other places, like creating voices, creating scripts, creating images, and it's taking all of that from Google Drive where you store it, and they also own YouTube. So you could guess that a lot of the training data that they have, which is theirs, is going to make this way more robust. Now they've also talked about Imagine 2 being available to create four second videos from images. Now that is something similar that you know Pika and Runway use, but if you look at this, this is Imagine. Um, I've talked about it before, Right, let's take a look at this real quick. Uh, you see this, that is a prompt of a flower. You have a prompt of a tent uh, near an ocean side, a pot with cooking food, a uh, landscape of mountains. It's pretty fascinating, right? Um, and it's basically doing what a lot of these other things are doing. So let's take a look at this. You can remove elements, which they've already talked about. You can add elements to photos, expand the borders of an image, you know, turn it into a portrait. There are so many different things that you're gonna be able to do. Now, how soon will it build up to Sora-like quality? I'm not sure. Well, I'm guessing Sora is trained on YouTube videos and Google owns YouTube. So there is going to be some conversations had there, I guess, especially when other people are gonna to wanna to train it on YouTube and they're gonna have their own model. There's a, going to be a lot of probable lawsuits that come around. They also mentioned updates to meetings and docs and all of their workspace stuff where they're gonna be able to summarize meetings and emails. Google is prepping itself to be a powerhouse that can just keep building on all of these features that they already are giving you every day, right? Individual companies are specifically focused on little pieces here and there from the document to the presentation, but Google is going to have all of it. And within time, they're gonna be able to do everything. So the competition, 
I'm guessing is going to be pretty fierce. Another company we all know is trying to expand their services. DocuSign is not only wanting to be your go-to when you need to sign something digitally, but they actually want to get involved in how businesses create manage and analyze contracts. They're set up to do so. Having my, had my own company, I know how much legal can cost. And to have an option of a contract builder like this at your disposal, it's really exciting. It's just going to be a great tool specifically for the small business market. Let's just dive right into this. I'm just gonna show you something from DocuSign. Over time, business got smarter, faster, easier, but the way we handle agreements is stuck in the past. The valuable information agreements contain is trapped inside static documents. These outdated systems and processes escape the agreement trap. Introducing Intelligent Agreement Management with DocuSign IAM, a new platform that makes every step of the agreement process smarter, accelerating revenue, reducing risk, and unlocking value. With IAM, the work of agreeing is done collaboratively on one intelligent platform. Anyone can create a contract with a drag and drop editor. Sales, automate contracting to close deals quickly. Procurement, get your teams the tools they need fast. Want to delight customers? Create seamless customer experiences with automated workflows. No coding required. Signers get a smoother signing experience. and So what they're trying to do is they're trying to really tackle everything. And it's pretty, it's pretty awesome and pretty in-depth and I think this is going to be a really interesting tool. I'll leave the video of this in the description so you could just go watch the whole thing. Apple is allegedly making a deal with Shutterstock in the area of 25 to 50 million dollars for AI training of their images. Well it is nice that they are paying for it. Who is getting this money, right? How does this work? Are the artists getting the money? Are the photographers getting the money? Are the people inside the images that were taken getting this money? I'm sure it won't be the only deal that they make in this category. Uh, Apple just signed a $50 million licensing deal with Shutterstock to acquire AI training. As per an ethical AI data partner, they're willing to pay $1 to $2 per image, $2 to $4 for a short video, $5 to $7 per nude image, and $100 to $300 per hour of a long video. So that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money uh, when you start getting into it. We'll see how this progresses and I'll keep you updated. Now I wanna talk about something that's really cool. Uh, text to video game is becoming a thing. I came across this new tool called BuildBox 4. And if you take a look at it, it is um, pretty neat. And there's a lot of people trying to uh, get into the no code game making uh, category. Uh, but this one is one of the coolest ones I've seen yet. Let's just take a look at this. I'm gonna leave the link to that video and this website in the description, but it talks about like, look, it has your build box shop. You can get all the assets for your game, template library, smart assets. Uh, that are also built in the library to help you bring your game to life, brain boxes, uh, all sorts of stuff. But the coolest part to me is being able to type a prompt and then actually have a video game get coded for you. Uh, that's pretty insane. And I'm, I'm very excited to play around with this even more. Now that we see what Pika and Runway are doing with Lip Sync, I think it is important to see one that is maybe way more comprehensive and a bigger scale. Now this software has been around for a little bit, but it's called Flawless. And if you look right here, it is considered an AI filmmaking tool. What it does is it actually is creating a mesh around the person's face creating the 3D you know, face basically, so then it can manipulate the, the way that the person speaks, right? And what comes out of their mouth. So if you look down here, it talks about true sync in the editor. It gives you the immersive audience experience. Um, like right here, it's perfecting your story, seamlessly make dialogue changes that you need, further optimize your shots, increase onset filmmaking efficiency, streamline the process, right? Design for editors. Uh, like, look at this. Let's let's um, 
Let's bring it up here. It allows you basically to track the person's face, give it the dialogue that you want it to have, and then it's going to actually create it over the 3D image and make that person say it. This tool is pretty amazing. Uh, check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. Now let's take a look at this thing called Ace Studio. It's pretty neat, and this is another one that I think uh, in the in the music industry, it's going to have uh, a few people debating its existence, but it allows you to actually create vocals, right? Take a look. We all know that vocals are a very important and essential part of music that connects the most with listeners. But for a lot of producers, the process of creating vocals can sometimes be challenging. And even with AI, securing the rights to use it for vocals can come with obstacles. Ace Studio is a desktop AI vocal synthesis software with clear and easy to use commercial licensing. All you need to do is input MIDI and lyrics, and then click play. Well, I'm in love. You can record any melody ideas, and with our acapella convert feature, with one click, you can let the AI singer express your ideas in full-fledged vocals. But what about the usage rights to AI vocals? Our voice models are fully authorized for commercial use. Each and every one of our AI voice models is authorized for use by our original vocalist. So usage rights are very clear and easy to use. Use AI vocals in your next track and break the boundaries of vocal creation. You can effortlessly make new... Now, to me, that says that the vocalists are getting paid when their voice is used. So that's pretty interesting. I have to dive a little bit deeper into that. But again, I'm just trying to make some of these available to you. Okay, I want to show you another cool tool for sound design and sound effects for films, shorts, animation. It's called Croto Studio. It's basically like your own uh, sound effects machine or Foley artist, really. So if you come in here, take a look at this. Uh, so if you just need ambiences, all you do is you're literally just clicking on the city. I could add traffic by clicking down here. Right, traffic. I want more horns. Sirens if I want sirens. You could do the forest. Suburbs. Now look at this. Ready? Cool. Footsteps. You know Foley artists. We all know Foley artists. So boots on urban extra. Okay. On broken glass if I come up over here. If I want them on gravel. Metal. Concrete. You could change the scuff. You could stop it. Um, whooshes, right? So fire. No, it's... And I'm just holding it down and then moving it around. You do light sword. Cra add more crackle to it. Hum. So you're basically just creating all of these things. So a cottage door closing, opening. Um, let's see what else we have, like a light switch. Click, cord pull. Button, toggle. It's pretty awesome. Um, if you use the uh, word unlock, uh, you can get two months free. That's what I did. I'm gonna be playing around with this a lot. It's pretty neat. I'm gonna show you one more tool that has been uh, going around basically the internet. I've seen everybody on X using it. I haven't actually made one of myself yet. I will, I might dive a little bit more in depth, but this tool is called Viggle. Take a look at this. There is an example of uh, Viggle. You have a, an artist coming out on stage and walking down and they just basically input uh, the Joker from Batman and that. That was pretty cool, but just take a look at this. Watch, watch what it can do. So it's getting so good, right? It's getting so good. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna do one for myself and maybe one of my characters. It's pretty insane. 
Um, there's so much more that came out. Just tune in. Keep coming back. I'm going to give you some more of these videos. I'm going to probably dive into things like Viggle, probably Krotos a little bit more. And uh, I will see you next week. Sign up for the newsletter. Uh, I will get that to your inbox every Tuesday morning. So you just can uh, hop on and make sure that you know and stay up to date with everything coming out and use it for your workflows. And speaking of workflows, I put my own workflows uh, for things in my AI toolbox. The link is also in the description. Check that out. Subscribe to the channel, please. And I will see you next week.